Yeah, now it. Now we can get it. Okay, good. Okay, so how is your uh, I mean, the regular preparation and uh, the studies, everything? Yeah, going uh, good, Uncle. Now, now we have uh, like holidays. Okay. But uh, I mean, I, I hope uh, with uh, all our sessions, uh, you are getting an idea how you should learn anything. And yes. uh, uh, I mean, you should be bold enough to have the courage to ask questions to the level that uh, you you bring the kind of understanding that will help you to have a good idea about why and what is the representation and how. Uh, you can do something mathematically or with uh, some kind of uh, reasoning and uh, ev uh, some evidence for supporting your case and uh, when something can be applied and when you see some some something is explained in a particular way and uh, how you can connect that with your already understanding about uh, the mathematical background or other physics or chemistry or biological things. That is how you need to develop yourself to get better with learning anything or understanding anything. Okay. Okay. okay so um, also, I mean, uh, you are still young, so the way you look into things and the experience you gained so far might not be good enough to immediately capture the the main understanding or why something is like that, but you need to develop that okay so your your thing is not only mean looking into problems and getting a final answer or oh, the answer is correct move on not like that and also not somebody said so even i i said something you you should not just take it anything granted it should be from your point of view with your understanding you should develop everything with uh, some meaningful information okay Okay. Today, let's start. I mean, in in the school mathematics, uh, what was the topic they finally completed? Uh, trigonometry. Trigonometry. Okay. Also, you said last time the trigonometry was a uh, bit not uh, uh, mean okay with you, right? Yeah. Yeah. And the last time we started looking into that. So in the exam. Uh, or in the whatever the quarterly exam, did you do the trigonometry problem? Yes, okay. Yes. Okay. 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 I mean, you, you should not take any topic or anything like uh, uh, this is difficult uh, compared to something else. Nothing like that. It's all about how much you learn and understand. Then depending on that, you can make use of them even to approach the problem or to understand or even uh, where that could be applied and everything okay so the last time uh, we went up to Pythagoras and the definition for yes. the sine theta cosine theta tan theta you are okay with that yes yes okay so basically uh, let's say if you have a, a triangle you start with a right angle triangle Sorry for my drawing. Uh, this is 90 degree. Okay, so we draw uh, this kind of thing for the 90 degree. So this is 90 degree. So a right angle triangle, but the sides are. I mean, we can say that, for example, a A B C. For example, yeah, yeah, triangle. I mean, it's not only for the the right angle triangle. Any triangle, even it could be some. some non right angle triangle it could be a abc but a triangle can be formed only when the sum of any two side must be greater than the other side okay otherwise uh, I mean, this is straightforward logically like uh, this can be understood very straight away let's say the sum of the two sides is equal to the other side then actually we can fit only a straight line. So let me take a bit of a room here. Let's say there is a, a length A, right? And let's say the length B and C, when you add them and become a A, then we are talking about we can fit only, for example, split it here. This could be our B and this could be C. This is the case for B plus C is actually equal to A. 
Yeah. Okay, you cannot get a triangle with that. You need to start forming a triangle, at least something like this, right? Then in that case, the B plus C will be greater than A. Do you catch that? Okay. Yes. Hello, I cannot hear you. Mr. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you, you catch the point, right? Why the sum yes, of yes. the... Yeah, any two sides must yes, be greater than the other side. Okay. So here, when we have a right angle triangle or, or some other angle, let's say we take one triangle and let's extend the, the two sides and form another similar triangle. Now you see the the length, let's say this is our A, B and C. Now the this length could be our A, A, A prime and this could be our B prime and this could be our C prime, a new, new triangle, okay? But the length got changed, but the three angles are still the same. So let's say this is our theta, for example and this is, this will be 90 minus 90. theta and this angle is still theta and this angle is still 90 minus theta okay so so this is actually mean if you call that as a a b c and b e for example then we are talking about the a b c triangle, triangle ABC is uh, mean and the triangle ADE are similar triangles. Okay. So this is actually a terminology. So somebody says that there are two similar triangles means then we should know that the, the sides are parallel to the corresponding the other triangle sides and we are going to have the angle remains the same. Do you catch that? Yeah. Okay, with this understanding, this leads to, let's say if you have a, a trigonometric ratios like uh, take sine theta, sine theta can be written for both the, it will be the same for even though the length can be different, but the ratio will... So coming from the from triangle ABC, what will be the sine theta? Sine theta will be... Can you tell me in terms of... Theta, so it will be B by C. Okay, so I will start with capital AB divided by the BC, the hypotenuse, that AB is actually B over C. Okay. okay. And how about the cos theta? Cos theta will be uh, uh, AC by BC, which will be A by C. Okay, very good. A by C. And we know that the tan theta is actually, is a derived trigonometric ratio, which is sin theta by cos theta. B by part would have cancelled up numerator. So you can even write it, AB over BC divided by AC over DC. So, reciprocal and everything, eventually it will be B by A. B by A. Yeah, okay. In the case of uh, the, the other triangle, so from the similar triangle, uh, the triangle ADE, we will find that the, the sine theta, we have a different, uh, so that will be the opposite side will be AE, right? Yeah, it will be, yeah, it will be B yeah. prime by C. Right? Yeah, that will be D divided by DE, which is actually our B prime by C prime. C prime. But this should be equal to the B by C also. You catch that? Yeah. Okay. Same sine theta. So it, it holds good for the cos theta and the tan theta also. So the trigonometric ratio actually helping us to uh, work around. Like if you have similar triangles, then through the trigonometric ratios, we can see that we can relate the 
the relation between the sites and all those things and we can do lot of other things also using the trigonometric ratios but we should have a better understanding about the trigonometric ratios and how we can use them it will come later you are okay with that right yes and always remember we have the pythagoras always the the c square must be equal to a square plus b square for the triangle this is for the triangle abc and for the other triangle c prime squared must be equal to a prime squared plus b prime squared yes yeah. this is for our other triangle ade so that should be always so whenever we see something like an angle and whenever the triangle uh, is a right angle triangle we can make use of that like all these things can help us to do some mathematical calculation or something like that are you okay up to here yes yes okay so now i will uh, i will go for a bit of an uh, application and then we can come back uh, like uh, what else we can do with that okay the so first thing should be like let's say we have two references two number lines like our x and y axis so this is our x axis and y axis let's say there is a straight line okay and this straight line will have its equation like y equal to mx plus c right Yes. Yes. Okay. So the straight line. I mean, we know that the angle measurement, this direction angle with respect to the reference, we say that this is a zero degree, right? Zero degree yes. or zero radian. Have you have you learned about radians? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, we will cover that also. But uh, take take it as zero angle or nine, uh, zero radian. Okay. Zero degree okay. or but but the quantity what we are talking about is an angle. so when we go to okay. 90 degree so this will be zero degree or zero radian and this will be a 90 degree so a pi by 2 so we we use the reference for everything we need a reference that is our horizontal axis right right side direction that is the positive side direction is our zero angle then we have to rotate in the anti clockwise direction also called the counter clockwise direction will be our positive so this direction will be our positive direction okay positive yes direction for the angle direction for the angle okay angle measure so with that when we reach the y axis positive side we will reach 90 degree or equivalently pi by 2 pi by 2 radian okay. so when we go to the negative x axis this is our negative x axis we would have reached an angle from the zero angle anti clockwise rotation 180 exactly 180 degree or uh, pi radian pi radian okay and when we still go another 90 degree that will reach you to minus the axis, that will be 270 degree or 270 degree or 3 by 2 right Yes. Okay. So that will be our radian. Then we come back and complete. That will be exactly match with 360 degree, or our 2 pi radian. So here now we, with the property of the angle measurement and everything, when we go one complete cycle, we will reach the same position, same angle. but the angle has to stay with the 360 degree or 2 pi radian because that will tell us we completed one rotation with respect to the reference 0 yes. degree or 0 radian we catch that yes sir so periodically we call something called period periodicity what is the meaning so when you go through the angle repetitive occurrence of something exactly it will exactly it will complete the every one cycle will complete 2 pi radians and that we need to know but when you convert the 360 degree is equal to 0 degree or something we are we are actually removing the information of how many cycles it has gone through do you catch that Yes. So if we say an angle that okay, for example, seven twenty degree, 
then we know that we have completed two cycles but actually we would have come back to the same position so 0 degree or 360 degree or 720 degree will be in the same position that is the positive x axis direction but when we explicitly say it as a 0 degree or 360 degree or 720 degree that will tell us how many period or how many cycles we completed in the measurement of the angle okay okay that we need to have so many of the realistic uh, application could be in rotational movement rotational displacement is very common the wheels are use, do, doing that any vehicle we will have a wheel that will be rotating in cycles and uh, motor generator I mean uh, everything will have this kind of uh, rotational mo moment like cycle okay so for all those things the angle measure will come into picture now we need to have a, a kind of understanding what is the meaning of this angle and how this can be uh, actually connected to all the other things what we have learned in our life in mathematics because always remember there is something called representation in mathematics that is the mathematical language like zero means it is a symbol written as a zero okay a number okay yeah one means a number looking like that like I, I explained plus is we accepted addition is a plus multiplication is a cross like that so in terms of all those things now we have come to a new quantity which is the angle and when you do a cyclic measurement of angle it is getting uh, repeated and it has a period and a periodicity all those property and everything so now bit of the uh, application and everything you see the axis x and y axis we already know about lot about the x and y axis we used to this for graphical representation of two quantities and we use two number lines one in the horizontal direction one in the vertical direction right yes yes so even we know that let's say there is a let's take any coordinate points let's say this coordinate point is x comma y then we have the clear understanding this means if you take an axis uh, go and meet with the x axis so from the reference point 0 comma 0 one for the x value 0 that is horizontal number line reference point and one for the vertical uh, number line reference point another 0 we are talking about this length measure is actually our x you get that yes yes so we say that this point is actually our x and you take this, this x value minus 0 so this value take away this value that will be our x measure you catch that yes yes okay and similarly the y the ordinate point also this is going to be our y value that means we are talking about this length vertical length from the zero value of the y all the way if you go to y value vertically up then we will get the the y minus zero is actually our y so that is our length right okay. so we, we all know this and we know that there are straight lines like okay there, there could be a straight line even if you, if you extend this horizontal line this this line is what the equation of the straight line is the y has to be a particular value which is y is equal to y all the y but yeah. x is actually equal to x can be what value it can be all the value do you get that yeah x can be any value if yeah, yes, but why is a particular let's say okay if you, if you want to put it like uh, I, I put the x and y that's why it is a bit confusing uh, let's call it as a a comma b that could be a, so this will be our a this will be our a this will be our a you catch the point what I'm trying yes, to say yes then this will be our b and then this will be our b that is a b minus b in that case we are talking about y equal to b that is the equation yes. for the straight yes. line y is equal to b okay 
But but x can take any value. So x can be anything. Okay, for this it, it takes all the value horizontally. It can be so if you if you move to a point here, whatever the x value here, that value comma b. So if you move to this value, then we will have a, another straight line. Whatever the x value comma that will be this point comma b. Okay. Yes. So now try to understand this like. What is this? Y equal to b is the equation for this straight line, but we learned y equal to m x plus c is the generic straight line equation. Compare with this. When we when we make a comparison, we should understand from the generic equation we have a special case that m is actually equal to zero and the c is actually equal to b. Then this equation will look like y equal to Zero multiplied with x plus b, that is actually y is equal to b. That is what this straight line is. You understand that? Yes, sir. So we need to understand this. Why it is the meaning, the slope. So all the horizontal horizontal straight lines, their slope will be all zero. That is why the y the x got disappeared in the given equation. So it could be b. This could be, for example, uh, yeah, d, for example, value. Then the straight line will be y equal to d. Correct, isn't it? Yes. So that we need to have an understanding. So if you take even a, a equation for a, a vertical line, let's say take this equation. This will be a particular value for the x alone. So x is actually equal to a a. This will be our straight line. But yes. what will be the y? Y can be anything, okay? Yeah, positive value. Okay. So if you take this particular equation, x must be the particular value a. So y can be anything. So y equals like it, it, it has a particular value for the. So I'm I'm going from the y equal to m x plus c. So take the generic equation y equal to m x plus c. In there the x we are substituting equal to so for this straight line we are substituting this one and we are going to say that y can take anything isn't it yes so that is I mean the, the c I mean Any come to that, but, but what about the m what is happened to the m that is the question first of all so what value we can put here that is a big question mark right yeah so now we come to the point like what is the meaning of the gradient that uh, the slope m meaning that that we know that right so when we say y equal to m max plus c that is simply when the the when you when you take a straight line so i put here some generic straight line not the vertical or the horizontal so let's say the point is let's say there is a a1 comma b1 point and we have another point like a2 comma b2 point then we are questioning when the x value change from a1 to a2 what will be happening to our y value it will be changing from b1 to b1 to b2 yeah. that is the question we are asking what is the the rate of change of so understand the statement the rate of change of x y y value y value with respect to x value okay yes. so that will be coming as a like b2 minus b1 is the change happened in the y compared to the the x value change from a1 to a a2 to a1 we catch that yes so this is the ratio we are asking that to what if the x is changing from a2 to a1 if the variation of the x is a2 minus a1 then what is the variation happening in the y we call that as the gradient yeah okay so this can be also written as yes. delta delta y divided by delta x delta if you want the change yes. happened in the vertical value coordinate values 
divided by the corresponding change in the horizontal value that is the gradient we are talking about so in the case of so for any any questions or doubt you are okay so far right yes sir okay so now we are asking let's say we take a we, we know that when you when you take a specific case a horizontal straight line then you take a point here this will be our our a1 comma b1 right yes and if you move to another point this one I mean actually our a2 comma b2 is this but it is actually equivalent to our the x got changed but the y remains the same isn't it because it is actually the b1 point we are in an any horizontal line the y value will never change so the x can change from a1 to a2 do you see that yes okay so that is the understanding so when you look for the what is the m value then we are asking for delta y to the delta x even though we know that the two points are like b2 minus b1 divided by a2 minus a1 but as it is an horizontal line the y value is not changing this is nothing but b1 minus b1 divided by a2 minus a1 this actually comes to 0 divided by a2 minus a1 which is nothing but 0 yes so any horizontal line the slope the gradient is actually always the m value is equal to 0 we need to understand that okay yes yes now go to the the other case let's go to the the vertical line if you take any vertical line then it will be let take two points take this point that is our a1 comma b1 and take another point that is our a2 comma b2 but in this case actually this is equal to a1 comma b2 because the x value the so value is the same ah b the y value changed from b1 to b2 okay so when we question this equation what is the m for this equation the slope again the change in the y to the change in the x that is b2 minus b1 over a2 minus a1 the b value got changed so b2 minus b1 is okay the vertical value got changed but here it is a1 minus a1 so this is b2 minus b1 divided by 0 anything divided by 0 will be our infinity yes okay in b t i hope you understand the meaning of the infinity let take a quantity what we are saying here b2 minus b1 is a definite quantity do you see that this is our b2 minus b1 a definite quantity yes. if you try to split into small pieces which is almost which is a zero length then there will be infinite amount of pieces in that that is the meaning okay if why why any divide a number by 0 you get a infinity that is the reason for that because any fraction is we are asking the numerator quantity to be split into so many number of denominator quantity here we are asking the a definite numerator quantity to be split into like by a length which is actually zero length that means you will have infinite amount of pieces in that okay 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 give me a couple of minutes I'll be back soon okay Okay
Hello. Hello. Hello, Krishma. Hello? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so you got the, the reason why the gradient for an horizontal line is zero and the vertical line is uh, infinity, right? The voice is... Yeah, yeah. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, uncle. Your voice went off in a minute. Oh, okay. So, uh, you understand why the horizontal line the gradient or the slope value is zero and the vertical one yes. is infinite, right? Yes. Okay, so now we are questioning in between the, and we are talking about the angle, right? So we have a zero degree and we have a 90 degree here, or I mean, of course the equivalent is uh, we have a zero radiant and uh, here it is pi, pi by, by two. Yeah, pi by two radiant. So when the, when the line, when you have, when you have a straight line, like a yeah, horizontal straight line, let's say when it is rotating and when it become a vertical straight line. Do you see that? When it become a vertical straight line, so this actually having a gradient zero become a gradient actually value is going to be infinity part. So the angle we are talking about from 0 degree to, zero to infinity. a 90 degree change in the angle of the line, the, the value of the gradient is going to change from 0 to infinity. That, that is very straightforward understanding. Do you catch that? Yes, yes. Okay. So now, angle we know from 0 to 90, it is going from like, uh, I mean, every, every small, we can, we can divide that into 90 equal pieces and each small piece will be our 1 degree, right? Yes. And when it goes to the vertical, when it become a vertical straight line, we know that the angle is 90 degree, but the, the slope has blown up to infinity value, right? Yes. So we need to understand when m is ranging from like uh, 0 to 90 degree, 0 degree to 9, no, sorry, 0, sorry, 0 value to infinity, right? That will be same as the theta is actually changing from 0 degree to 90 degree. Are you with me? Do you understand what I am writing here? Yes, sir. So if you if you draw a a a a, a straight line, and if, if the straight line is making a theta angle with the x-axis, then we are saying let's say the theta value it can start from a horizontal. This zero degree is our horizontal line. horizontal okay. line, right? Yes. And it can go up to 90 degree, for example. Then you, you, you see the rotation, right? You, you keep this one as a fixed point. And actually, this, this one is saying we start as a straight line like this. And we rotate and this line become like this. So in doing so, the theta is going to change from, this is our variation. Do you get that? The range. Yes. In doing so, the m value is actually zero slope to infinity. This is what happening to our gradient. Okay. Yes. So with this understanding, we can see that 
like we also take it as okay now put it as a beautiful way of uh, drawing that as a take a point in our straight line which is actually for example our x comma okay we can take it as a a comma b for easiness we know that this is going to be a a point this will be our a value and this is will be our b value isn't it yes okay now this is actually crossing the point here now we are saying that this angle is our theta measure so now this point I mean this this point will be what this will be some some value right the 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 y value become a zero and our x value will be call it as a a not are you with me yes this point right because the the y value is the 0 comma 0 point so if you look at this can you tell me what is this particular length so the understanding should be like from here to all the way here is our a yeah and up to here to here is our that is how we need to look into it a minus a comma uh, a not a not uh, sorry only the a comma a, a minus a, a not there is no a comma because we are talking okay. about only the horizontal distance okay so in that duration when the point a not comma zero goes to a comma b this this length is actually going from b minus zero you catch that yes okay so you see beautifully there is a right angle triangle formed automatically here so if you look for m with these two points like uh, call that as a, a b c then we always say that the the m is nothing but delta y by delta x delta. yeah in our case we are going to say that this is going to be the up the the b minus 0 divided by our a minus a naught isn't it yes correspondingly if you if you take the tan theta the trigonometric ratio we learned according to the right angle triangle abc the bc over I mean bc over ab isn't it yes that is also same as our b minus 0 divided by a minus a naught right yeah so a yes, straight line if you want to calculate the gradient you can simply take the tan of the angle the straight line made with the positive x-axis that will give us straight away the, the gradient value also okay yes this is one of the application of the uh, the, the um, trigonometry okay the tan ratio of the angle made by the straight line with the positive direction of the x-axis if you know that angle the take the tan trigonometric ratio that will straight away give you the slope of the straight line okay 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 so that has to be come very handy okay are you okay with that I mean one of the application what we spoke here yes okay and with the same understanding let's say you go like uh, the the straight line here the m is actually equal to zero here m is actually equal to infinity okay again if you if this one we are talking about the the angle is actually zero degree less than theta less than 90 degree within this this is happening the m is changing from zero to infinity but this is not completing the cycle right we have still there is a 90 degree less than theta less than 180 degree during this direction the m value from infinity it has to reduce come to a definite value and it has to become m equal to 0 
again here. Yes. Catch that because it become the again the horizontal uh, straight line. Okay. In doing so, we can see that okay when there is a straight line or something like this, then if you take the yep, the any two points. Okay, take a point like A1 comma B1 and another point as A2 comma B2. If a straight line is making an angle within this range, that 0 to 90 degree, okay? Okay. In this case, when you see the, the M, the slope, actually what will happen? B2 minus B1 divided by A2 minus A1. The, both this, this numerator value, this one will be also positive. This denominator value will also be positive. Reason being, the line, when you take a point like A1 here, if you move to a higher value, A2, so we are moving the x value from a lower value A1 to a higher value A2, then definitely the y value also increase from a lower value B1 to a higher value B2. Do you see that? Yes, sir. Because of the way the straight line makes the angle with that x-axis, positive x-axis. So in the range of 0 degree less than theta less than 90 degree, we will see the, the m value starting from 0 going to infinity. In between, if you take any angle in between, for example, if the theta is 30 degree, then we can say that the m will be positive. You get that? Yes. So that should be the understanding. So from the zero value, it takes all the positive values slowly increasing when you rotate the, so if you keep this as the pivot point, take the line and if you rotate to become a, a, a vertical line, the straight line will slowly will look like this. Do you get that? Yes. So the slope is slowly increasing from zero value when it become vertically up it gets to the infinity so all the straight line the straight line from horizontal to the vertical making angle between 0 to 90 degree with respect to the x axis all those straight line will have positive slope and they will horizontally that I mean straight line will have a gradient value 0 and it will go all the way to the infinity when it makes 90 degree with the positive x-axis. Do you understand this? Yes. Extend the idea. We should not stop over 0 to 90 degree. What will happen to the when the th 90 degree less than theta less than 180 degree? Now we are asking from the m equal to infinity. Infinity yeah. to 0. Yes, yeah, 0. Then the straight line will be the straight line will look like this. You get that? Yes. So if, during this time, from the vertical position, it, it is making like this. The value, so that will be 90 degree less than theta less than 180 degree. So the m will be infinity to 0. Okay. If you take any angle in between, for example, if you take 135 degree, we can definitely see the M will be negative. Why that is so? We can clearly see, take an example, you take a straight line looking like this, take any two points, take one point and take another point, let's say call the first point is our, our A1, A2, B1, A1, B1, B1, and this one is a A2, comma B2. Now you see when the value A, A1 changes to A2, in this direction is a positive direction for the X value. So definitely the value is increasing. Do you get that? So what yes. I mean is A2 is actually greater than A1. That should be the understanding. In doing so, when you move along the line, the B2 value B, B1 value is actually decreased to 2 B2. So in this actually this is going in the negative direction. That means B1 will be greater than 
or we can say B2 is actually less than B1. Are you with me? Yes. So when you look for M, M still the definition is the same. B2 minus B1, the difference in the vertical corresponding the difference in the horizontal. A2 minus A2. Yeah, but this quantity will be a negative quantity. And this quantity will be a positive quantity. You see that? Depending on, so either way, like we can we can put the other point, the either way, like you can take a two points here and here. One of them will be negative, other one will be positive. So, during, so from the vertical position to become a horizontal position straight line, all the lines will will have negative, M, M will be negative. Yes. You understand that? Then again, I mean, this portion will be our, again, it will, it will become the, the other, other straight line. Do you catch that? Yes. So all of them are covered. If you, if you understood from 0 to positive infinity and 0 to the, I mean, infinity to the 0, then we know that what are all the things happened that will cover the other, other, other two portion also. Are you okay? Yes. Okay. Also, I mean, other way of understanding is, if you see here, the x value is positive. Positive for x. And here, positive for y. And here, negative for x. And here, negative for y. Right? Yes. Now, if you ask for tan theta, what is happening from here to here, both the, if you, if you take a point and if you make a right angle triangle, then the, the this side will also be positive, this side will also be positive. So tan theta will be a positive quantity which is the opposite side and positive for the adjacent side also. Then the positive divided by positive will be a positive quantity. You guess that? Yes, yes. That is another understanding why m is positive. So m is actually equal to tan theta. So when the theta is between 0 degree to 90 degree, we will have the slope is all positive. But if you take a point here, then if you make a, a, if you take a right angle triangle, okay, now this will be negative. This will be still positive. You see that? Yes. So if you take a tan ratio in this angle from between the 90 degree less than theta less than 180 degree, then this will be always the opposite side will be positive, the adjacent side will be always negative. So this negative. will lead to a negative value. Negative so that is why m equal to tan theta will be a negative value. Right? Yes. When you go to the third quadrant, we call this as the first quadrant and this is the second quadrant and yes. this is the third quadrant. Here in this case, if you take a point here, then make a right angle triangle. This is a right angle triangle. Then the this side, this side will be negative. This side will also be negative. You see that because of the theta. So when you take a tan theta, the opposite side will also be negative, the adjacent side will also be negative, negative divided by negative quantity will become a positive quantity. Yes. Are you okay with that? Yes. So this is the reason between 180 degree less than theta less than 270 degree. So now we know that M is going to be positive, the tan theta which is going to be positive. And finally, in this, the, the 270 degree, less than theta, less than 360 degree, during this time, if you take any point, then make a right angle triangle. This side, opposite side will be negative, but the adjacent side will be back to positive. 
right so yeah. in this if you look for a tan theta the opposite side will be negative the adjacent side will become positive so that makes the overall answer as a negative value so m is equal to tan theta will be a negative value in that quarter okay yes so if you make it like this straight line m will be greater than greater than 0 this straight line m will be less than 0 positive or negative we get that yeah. so this is another way of understanding something and how we are going to make use of that for uh, any purpose okay yeah. any questions or doubts of no no Okay, so try to connect things like that. That will that will help us a lot. So okay. now uh, to to end today's session, I will just uh, uh, mean connect something like when you when you have a a coordinate point, we have we know that let's say call that as a a comma b. We understood that. Okay, let's say connect this uh, this. this one and connect this one with this one this point is a 0 comma 0 and that is a a comma b so let's say call that this length as a mean for example r lower case r that is the the length from directly from the origin point to the straight line connecting to the a comma b point okay yes so call that as a the point is a a and origin is a o and this point is b now I mean we can we can say that this is our c so definitely this is our b minus 0 which is our b itself and this one is actually the sorry that is same as b minus 0 equal to b and this side we are talking about a Minus zero, which is a. Are you with me? Yes. So now this is the right angle triangle we are talking about, and we are interested in this theta angle, which is actually helping us to understand the straight line and the coordinate points, everything. We know that a comma b is one way of representing the coordinate points. Now, look at this very carefully. We have a length r. now according to the pythagoras theorem what you can tell about the length r the abscissa a and the ordinate b what is the relationship between a square plus b square will be equal to r square okay equal to r square this is pythagoras and also you you could have easily okay we, we we have given a formula like if there are two points coordinate point x1 comma y1 and coordinate point x2 comma y2 if if you want to find the the distance between let's say d is the distance between these two points like what we do, what is the formula we have been given by root of root of x2 minus y2 minus y1 the whole square so you started with x so i changed it so y plus But y2 minus y2 minus y. Have you ever questioned this? Why this is so? Uh, like that. I mean, you you know that, right? We have to always yeah. ask the question. So yes. let's say there is a point which is x1 comma y1, and there is another point x2 comma y2. Then we are saying the distance connecting these two d is actually equal to whatever the formula but basically we know this is the origin 0 comma 0 then this point is our x1 this point is our y1 right yes this point is our x2 this point is our y2 so this height is actually y2 minus y1 that is same as our height which is y2 minus y1 and this is same as this which is x2 minus x1 this is x2 minus x1 
So now look at this right angle triangle, beautiful, right? In this, don't you think that this d square must be equal to yeah, yeah. x2 yeah. minus x1 whole square according to the Pythagoras? Right? Ah, that is where that formula comes from. Nothing is a formula. It's all about the understanding. So this is this came from there. Okay. Okay. Are you okay with this? Yes. Okay. Think about this. I will. I will write. I, mean, I will go to the next board. Let's say you. We, we started with this one, right? Take a point A comma B. And we said that the line connecting the distance is R. Now, this is our right angle, the triangle. And if this is the theta, this length is our A. Right? Yes. And this length is our B. Just try to mean, we already know that according to the Pythagoras, R square must be equal to A square plus B square. Good. Because of that, we know that R is nothing but square root of A square plus B square. Well and good. Similarly, we can write A is actually equal to R cos theta and B is actually equal to R sin theta. R sin theta, yes. Okay. Think about this, how this is visible. This might be very straightforward. According to this theta, this is our opposite side, right? Yes. And this is our hypotenuse. And for the theta, this is our adjacent side. So, sin theta, according to the theta, opposite side is B divided by hypotenuse is R. This will tell us B is nothing but R sin theta. So, cosine theta also, adjacent side for the theta is A, hypotenuse is R. That leads us A is nothing but R cos theta. Okay, so the coordinate point in a two-dimensional graph can be written as a, a comma b. Also, we can write it as a r angle theta. Okay. Oh. Okay. Now we are saying that a comma b is exactly equal to r comma theta. Now it is our job to understand how to express a comma b in terms of r and theta. And also R, R and theta in terms of A comma B, that we need to derive and understand that. Okay. Oh. Okay. I will leave it at this point. Think about it. Work on it. We will continue uh -huh. next week. Okay. Okay. Any questions or doubt? No doubt. No doubt. Okay. Okay then. Take care. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye.